so great for DeFi because it's like the perfect gateway to a new ecosystem. It, it's not just the developers that can write in Solidity, it's also all of the surrounding tech stack that supports Solidity and has been built over the past you know, five years, call it. And so, uh, for the past 15 months, the monthly trading volumes of perpetuals already outweigh the trading volumes for spot assets. And then you'll see the real innovation on the Wasm and Inclairs. I think that's where the real interest stuff is going to get really interesting, but the EVM is a great way to get people in. Yeah, so uh, welcome to the DeFi Emergence on EVM Compatible Parachains panel. Uh, my name is Bill Laboon. I'm at uh, Web3 Foundation here in Zug, Switzerland. Um, so I think before we start, I just want to have everyone uh, that will be joining us give a little a short introduction of uh, what their, their projects are and who, who they are. Uh, so why don't we uh, uh, start uh, with Martin from Astar? Yes, great. Thanks a lot, Bill. So hi, my name is Martin. I'm the head of ecosystem development for Astar. Um, we are a smart contract parachain on Polkadot as well as on Kusama. Uh, we focus as well as on EVM as, as on Wasm smart contracts. So that's a little bit about us. Yeah. Um, how about uh, Nate from Moonbeam? Sure. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for hosting this, Bill. Good to uh, good to see you. Uh, I'm Nate. Uh, I lead ecosystem for Moonbeam. Uh, we're an EVM compatible parachain on uh, on Polkadot, and we also have our Moon River deployment on uh, on Kusama. Uh, Nico Grayshark from Firefly. Hey all. Uh, so Firefly is a substrate native non-custodial trading platform uh, that's democratizing access to financial markets. And the vision behind Firefly is to combine the speed and performance of centralized exchanges with the benefits of blockchain, such as transparency, immutability, and permissionless access. So the whole exchange is decentralized. Uh, there's not a central party storing funds. And all that's required to interact with uh, Firefly is to plug in a Web3 wallet. All right, very cool. All right, finally, Eric Ashdown from Covalent. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Eric, head of ecosystem at Covalent. Um, Covalent's data middleware, so we take a direct replica of 30 plus blockchains uh, and make it queryable from an API. So that's what we do. We work with uh, work with a lot of blockchains, including Moonbeam. Uh, we have you know we have Moonbeam. We have uh, direct replica of Moonbeam, Sheden, Moon River, and very soon Astar. We're very excited. Um, and so yeah, that's that's what we All do. Right. Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, so I guess my first question is, if you you know we can go through each of the the people here, whatever order that we like. You know, what are the benefits of developing DeFi applications? On EVM compatible parachain. So probably the obvious one is that you can use Solidity so that, you know, if you're familiar uh, with that, you can just, uh, which many people already are, you can just start uh, programming uh, on these EVM compatible chains. But are there any other uh, benefits to developing uh, with this? So whoever would like to take it, uh, please do. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, you know, I think I think you know you, you hit it on the head with uh, I think just the amount of developers in the space who understand Solidity and that's that's great. Uh, but I think one of the things that you know we also realized early on was it's it's not just the developers that can write in Solidity. It's also all of the surrounding tech stack that supports Solidity and has been built over the past you know five years, call it. And so you know whether it's things like the graph or you know uh, Chainlink or um, you know wallet support. Those are things that are you know are critical for developers and for end users, and so being able to utilize you know an EVM uh, on the DeFi side, it, it makes it a lot uh, more straightforward to be able to kind of get up and get you know deployed relatively quickly, uh, and have kind of this look and feel of tools and, and infrastructure that they're already used to used to using uh, kind of across the board. I think that's that's one of the big benefits of of being able to leverage uh, an EVM from a builder perspective. Yeah, I know from a user perspective. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I just just started to continue. Yeah, I know from a user perspective, we get you know people asking you know why doesn't the Polkadot JS extension act like MetaMask? Uh, and so if you can have you know tools like MetaMask that are using it, you can see how that's easier for users as well as developers. I, I apologize, Martin. Please. No, 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 no problem. I just wanted to add as well with the EVM why 
this EVM so great for DeFi because it's like the perfect gateway to a new ecosystem. And I think EVM is so uh, well known in the blockchain, it's so well known with the users, having that like available on any blockchain, it's just like a gateway for new users coming in and explore for us like Polkadot, for instance. And I think that's why EVM is so important to have. And um, yeah, that's what I wanted to add to Nick's uh, comment. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, um, so we're, we're a little different. We're not a blockchain, we're middleware. And so we have over 27,000 developers that have, that have signed up for Covela. Um, and the thing that we realized, it's a lot of it is the tooling and it's the standards. So an example is if you have a product and you're getting all of your data from one place and you'd understand what data you're pulling and, and what the data looks like and what it's supposed to look like when it arrives, it makes it so much easier opposed to going to learn a whole new stack, right? Um, everything is built around Ethereum. A lot of the tooling is built around it. And, you know, Ethereum, you know, is it every, every <laughs> Ethereum is not what it was in terms of the price and, 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 you know, the speed, like it has its own issues, but, uh, because the tooling is ubiquitous and it's what people have known to rely on. I think that it, it gives, it lets people focus on building things, building better products opposed to learning new tooling and new code. So I think that's a huge, huge advantage in the space. It's not to say that it's better. It's just to say it's more ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so people can and focus on yeah doing what they want to do and not learning something from scratch. Exactly. And I'll echo the comments uh, made by Nate and Martin as well, uh, that uh, even though we're in the Polkadot ecosystem, it was really important for us at Firefly to offer support for MetaMask and other popular extensions that everyone is already familiar with. And to provide more uh, context as well, like Eric did, we're building for the largest use case of Web3 today. Uh, for the past 15 months, the monthly trading volumes of perpetuals already outweighed the trading volumes for spot assets. And specifically in the last quarter of 2021, spot asset trading was 8 trillion uh, USD in volume and perpetuals trading volume was 10 uh, trillion USD. And so we're bringing this use case of a decentralized derivatives exchange uh, to the Polkadot ecosystem via an EVM compatible chain. So I think that's the main benefit is being able to cross pollinate the same use cases that are fundamental building blocks all around in, in blockchain to a Polkadot ecosystem. Yeah, that, that actually is a really good uh, segue to uh, my, my next question, um, which was you, you, there are a lot of other EVM compatible chains out there and, and ecosystems uh mm -hmm. so what made you what, you know, what what made you want to build in the polka dot ecosystem compared to uh, you know, so whatever you know whatever binance smart chain or ethereum or any of these other evm compatible right. uh chains right 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 i think it's uh two primary reasons uh scaling and then the cross-chain communications so the scaling model is is a very compelling uh, parallel computing kind of model where instead of using just one underlying layer one blockchain, we now have these pair chains, right? And uh, that what that will allow is the throughput of the whole ecosystem, the Polkadot ecosystem, is going to become much more over time. And I believe it will lead to stronger network effects of everyone using the same uh, the same ecosystem and having the same ecosystem experience. And then the second thing I mentioned was the cross-chain interactions. And that again is going to reinforce the network effects to be able to uh, interact with all of the different apps and all of the different protocols all across different parachains chains in the Polkadot ecosystem. And I think those two things uh, were really compelling reasons to build on Polkadot versus anywhere else. Um, all right. So, and I guess, you know, we've talked a lot about like sort of, you know, like very fundamental aspects of like, you know, building on EVM, but since, you know, this is talking about DeFi emergence, I'm curious what all of your thoughts are on you know, the state of DeFi uh, you know, in the Polkadot ecosystem and specifically like, you know, how it might compare uh, to, to other systems. Uh, so I know, like, you know, again, I think we have an interesting mix here, right? We have some people building projects and we have some people building that, you know, that infrastructure, you know, the, the substrate, if you will, uh, for, for DeFi applications. 
Um, so, so I'm curious what your thoughts are on the current state of DeFi, you know, in Polkadot, and probably you know even more so on Kusama, since things are you know, happening a little more quickly on there. Does anyone want to start off? All right, Nate, I see you unmuted yourself. Sure. So yeah, no, happy to happy to go. I mean, I think that you know, um, I think in uh, on the Polkadot side, we're like you know top of the first inning. If you're on the sports analogy, it's just like super early days. I mean, everything in Polkadot right now, XDM is going to go live here in the next like week or two, which is great. Uh, but I think like it is still like I, maybe it's not even the first inning. I don't know. Maybe it's like first pitch got thrown out. So uh, in, in Kusama. You know, I think, you know, it's a, it's a little bit further ahead, but still it is like super early days on the DeFi side. I mean, I think that there are great teams that, you know, we're, we're seeing build on, on Moon River uh, and you're going to see even more coming to Moonbeam as well. Uh, once some of the, the additional infrastructure is in place to be able to, to support that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that it, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes when you when you try and compare Polkadot to other you know layer zero or layer one ecosystems out there because you know folks are like well dot's, dot's been live or ksm's been live for over a year it's like, well yeah that's fine but that's just a token that's not actually the tech behind it and so until you know the crowd loans went live which was great on kusama but it took six months i think before xcm hit on kusama after the crowd loans and so you were kind of building in your own kind of silo um, and now we're starting to see the parachains talk to each other and start to get, you know, uh, XCM, you know, pathways set up so the tokens can start to move. And you, you know, with Moonbeam going, or uh, sorry, with uh, XCM on Polkadot going live um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll start to see that. But I mean, it, it takes a while. It takes it takes time to kind of you know adopt that and get teams collaborating. And so it's it's happening. It's still going to take you know I don't know three to six months before I think you see you know a lot of these use cases around XCM start to you know showcase, start to build, start to talk about it publicly. So I mean, I just think like it's it's way too early to really compare Polkadot and even Kusama in a lot of ways to any other you know ecosystems who've been you know running for a year plus at this point. Yeah, because like you said, that whole like you know cross chain um, communication and cross chain assets is really just starting, and I think that's sort of one of personally one of the big key differentiators uh, is that you know, this uh, very very simple cross chain communication. Um, but you know we are seeing that we're seeing a lot of interesting things, yeah, you know, on, on on state mine right now, and some assets becoming uh, sufficient and things like that, uh, and yeah, more HRMP channels opening all the time. Um, all right, so for our um, uh, project builders, uh, how do you see the state of DeFi currently uh, on Polkadot? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I have much to add over what Nate and Martin already said, given that they are parachain projects and they have a much clearer view and insight into the DeFi on their own respective uh, blockchains. Uh, but I will say that I agree with what was said about how it's only now getting built out and we're really in the first inning of the game. Uh, and I'm mostly looking forward to more and more DeFi primitives, apart from just Forex, also innovations, uh, different fundamental protocols coming together. And then soon enough, XCM being able to connect the liquidity between these different projects. And I think that will obviously create a lot of liquidity network effects and, and should be really strong for the experience as a whole. Another thing I'm also looking forward to is scaling. scaling. So tackling uh, throughput and transaction finality times for DeFi to be more performant, to be faster. And uh, this is this is part of our focus as well. Yeah, and that's definitely something you know that you know, the developers of, of Substrate and Polkadot have been working on, right? Is increasing scalability, mm -hmm. increasing you know, the speed speed of blocks, you know, with asynchronous backing, etc. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're exactly. Uh, it's great to see. It's great to see as a DeFi builder. Uh, that, that, yeah, that's good to know. Uh, okay, um, Eric. Forks on forks on forks on forks. There's a lot of forks. Um, I, I think the state as of now is the beginning. I think sort of what you're seeing is everything is, and this is why I, I think Astar and Moonbeam have massive legs up here, is that uh, everything is a fork. Like, like the amount of, I think there's over, I was doing, I think we looked, I pulled this stat recently, where on the chains that we index, there's I think 2200 Uniswap V2 forks. 
So I, I this is across like like a 30, 30 blockchains, right? So like I'm not like, but I think the thing is, is they're all necessary. They all serve a special purpose. I think the thing is, it's giving people the familiar things to get them in the door. And you know what I mean? It's like, it's the appetizer. It's 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 the thing that they're getting to know first. Um, I think these things will 100% evolve as, you know, XCM and all of these things come online and, and, and things start to grow in the Polkadot ecosystem as a whole. I think there's some great projects uh, on, on, on like a lot of the parachains. I think you're just going to see a lot of that at the beginning because it's the fastest way to get to market and everyone's just gonna find their niche over time. Um, it's like it's like anything else, right? Like once you, you you have more features, there's more you can do. The forks are going to die down. There's not going to be as many of them. Uh, maybe it'll be certain features that get adopted, some of the more popular features. But I think you know having some of these early projects and having the forks are great because you know uh, I look at something like Moonwell or um, I can't remember they're called one of the, any of the dexes on Moonbeam, and you look at them and there's a bunch of projects I've never heard of, and that right away is some marketing for some early nascent polka dot projects on just Moonbeam, right? So I think there's 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 a lot of interest there. Uh, and it's it's they're necessary to kickstart an ecosystem. They'll they'll grow, they'll evolve, new features will come online and things will just innovate naturally. Um yeah, great. So we talked um, about like the, the current state, and you know some people have uh, you know mentioned a few things that they're looking uh, forward to, like obviously XCM uh, on Polkadot, which should be coming you know very soon, um, and you know like increased liquidity um, and you know, like more cross chain communications. Uh, are there any other particular things anyone is looking forward to uh, in Polkadot that like either in terms of in terms of DeFi or in terms of things that would help DeFi? Right, that uh, you know, like additional things in the ecosystem or at the chain level or at the protocol level. Yeah, for us, it's basically the first DeFi product written in ink live on a mainnet as a parachain. I think that's what we are looking forward to getting the WASM on, on, on mainnet and getting everything up and running. Um, so, yeah, that's our main challenge for 2022. And I think um, we are getting closer and closer. So. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, I think, yeah, Bill, I think you mentioned the feature a little bit earlier, but it's the asynchronous backing. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna be a big deal for for all parachains. I think we're we're we might be impacted more than most right now, just because we we've gotten a lot of early traction, and so you know we're excited to kind of see that uh, come to fruition and, and the amount of throughput that 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 will kind of open up and uh, and stuff. So that's that's what I, I'm personally most excited about. I mean, I think. XCM going live is is awesome, and we're already seeing you know a, a lot of collaboration. I think that's that's something that's been missed. I think for a lot for maybe the past I don't know, year or so in the Polkadot ecosystem, maybe two year and a half is is before XCM was live, we were all kind of siloed, and so I think everyone had their own kind of things that they had to go do to get people excited, build community, and whatnot. And so it, it kind of fractured some of that collaboration uh, that just couldn't be done without that, without XCM being live. And so now that it'll be live on Polkadot and on Kusama, I think that you'll start to really see a lot more collaboration, which would be nice. Yeah, and that's, you know, uh, if I can just add, you know, add in my view here is something that I see that's very you know, amazing about the Polkadot ecosystem is the amount of collaboration between teams is, you know, even though, you know, there are a lot of different chains, we all sort of realize that, you know, we're, we're all part of the same ecosystem. And, you know, if, if one project gains and one chain gains, that's also the gain, gain of others. Um, so I see we just have about a minute or, or, or two minutes left. Uh, so are there um, any things that you sort of, you know, want to, to, you know, some last words uh, or final thoughts uh, before uh, we, we end the, the panel discussion? I'll throw in one thing that I think is just a, a, a lesson to be learned, um, which I think everybody should keep in mind. And this is something that I, I, I've shared a few times and I alluded to it earlier, but uh, I think as things start coming online, I think that's something to keep in mind is data standards in the sense that everyone knows what an ERC 721, 1155 is. And as, we, as these things start being created, uh, it's super important to keep them in mind because if you look, one of the biggest gaps in other ecosystems is knowing what actually happened after the fact. So I, this is coming from a data perspective, but if everybody has their own way of writing smart contracts and their own standards for their own chain and not everybody wants to collaborate or work together, that's going to cause massive problems and it's going to be a lot of finger pointing at the end of the day. I think data standards at this point is something that should be definitely discussed. Uh, I think it should be a higher topic of conversation and I think it'll make 
and getting third parties like us who are just so entrenched in EVM over 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 the line to come and start doing something different, right? Because it's one of the main problems. It's why you know Near doesn't have traction, or Solana doesn't have traction, or Elrond doesn't have traction. And these are I'm not, these aren't Polkadot specific, but it's I, Solana does argue, arguably now, but they paid a lot of money for it. Um, but I think there's I think there's something to be said about just making that. And it's not, it's, it's, and now is the time to start having these conversations, not, you know, two years in when everything is live and everyone's like, well, this is how we should do this contract. This is how this contract should be written. This is the standard and this is the NFT standard and this is this. So, uh, yeah, just a word of just forewarning. Uh, so it's not an afterthought. Yeah. And I'm happy to jump in. Also say that I'm really looking forward to, uh, Polkadot, the, all of the levels of the stack becoming more and more decentralized with light clients coming online such that anyone can join in and start validating the network. Uh, and over the next few months, I think we're really going to see that come to fruition. And I'm really looking forward for uh, to Polkadot becoming this unstoppable decentralized uh, layer zero protocol for all of these other innovations to take place. Yes, me, me too, definitely. Um... All right. It looks like uh, that uh, really quickly, Martin and Nate, do you want to uh, say any last words? Um, yeah, it's just some last words. So if you are maybe by any chance in the neighborhood of some conferences going on with, with Polkadot, please jump in because most of our private chains are also there. It's great to connect with community. And then you can see in real life how well we get along with each other because um, it's, it's, it's not that we are fighting or competing with each other. No, we are here to build Polkadot together. And I think you can see that definitely when you are in a conference and, and meeting us in person. Yeah, agreed. It's not about, you know, it's not about getting a, a bigger piece of the pie. It's about making the whole pie bigger. Uh, and that's, that's a collaborative effort that brings community together that makes everybody, you know, everybody, uh, we're, we're stronger as we work together and build, you know, the real value of Polkadot uh, and, things along those lines. So excited to see uh, how it's built over the next year and the equilibrium team as they come online and working with some of their DeFi primitives and their stables and things like that. I think will be super interesting. So thanks for, uh, thanks for putting this yeah, together. Thanks. Thanks, uh, thanks equilibrium. And uh, yeah, so that, that concludes it. And uh, yeah, I definitely am also looking forward to seeing uh, how Polkadot uh, uh, moves forward in the future. All right. Awesome. Thanks very much. Cool. Thanks everyone. Thank you.